Hello folks, welcome back to Music and Technology. <clears throat> this week we're going to be talking about MIDI. Okay, MIDI is short for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. As always folks, you can find this presentation uh, in the form of slides on our Google Classroom if you wish to go through it at your own pace. All right, let's begin. So in previous lessons, we talked about all these different things, zooming, trimming, separating, cutting, nudging, the grid, what the heck are fades, what are what cycling mean, what's merging, naming, coloring, different sections in your, your uh, DAW, putting markers in to different parts of your um, vocal performance or instrumental performance, what the heck is comping, and what is destructive editing and how to avoid it. <clears throat> Those are things we talked about in our last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Excuse me. This week we're talking about musical instrument digital interfaces, MIDI, MIDI data specifically. Okay, now MIDI data is not a direct rep representation of sound, like our digital sound, but it's more like a, a score, a piece of music that, that the computer reads. Okay, um, one bit of information is sent at a time. Okay, but your computer, even though one bit is getting sent at a time, your computer is really good at, at doing this really fast and very quickly. A MIDI message includes a channel number, okay? Remember, there are 16 different channels inside of any DAW. <clears throat> okay, so you want to think of it as a, as a, as a TV uh, channel, excuse me, not challenge, okay? It allows you to play a MIDI keyboard and access different, 16 different uh, sound sources, okay? So, you, so just like a TV channel, you can turn your TV on and you can access all these different channels at different times. And sometimes you can even access more than one channel at the same time if you have picture in picture. Excuse me, just like we're doing now. So after the channel, okay, after the signal goes through the channel, after you've selected a channel, a message is then sent. And there are different types of messages. We've got um, note messages, so note on or off messages, turning the signal on or off. We have control changes, turning the gain, turning the amplitude, adding different effects. And we have pitch bends that a MIDI keyboard can do. For example, I have a MIDI keyboard here, one of the Rolands from our school. And you can actually see here, okay, there's this knob. And this knob, if you push it left or right, can actually change the pitch, can pitch bend um, the pitches that you're, you're playing. <clears throat> All right, I'll keep it beside me just in case. Um, so, um, data words give us give certain parameters to different types of messages that you want to send okay and they're all um, seven bit words or seven um, seven bit numbers that that is, the signal is sent from the mini uh, instrument through the computer <coughs> excuse me for example if you play a C on a MIDI keyboard it sends a note on a message a note on message to a particular channel, and you can set that channel to whatever you'd like, okay? There will be one data word that tells us which note is C, so one thing that's gonna say, okay, that guy over there who has no facial hair anymore, he's pushing C, great, we got that, okay? Another data word is gonna be sent telling us the velocity, so how hard am I hitting that C? Uh, how hard am I hitting that note? Okay, if it's really hard, if I'm hitting it really hard, the velocity <clears throat> at which I'm hitting it, the pressure that I push down on that key, okay, the MIDI keyboard is gonna send a signal, a separate signal. So it sends one signal, so I hit it, boom. One signal gets sent say, telling the computer, oh, okay, he's playing a C, great. But then another signal is gonna get sent as soon as I push that key, depending on how hard I push it, the velocity I wish I push it, it's gonna send another signal saying, holy good Lord, he's pushing it really hard. We gotta send out a signal that's quite loud. Boom, more pressure equals higher uh, volume, okay? Or amplitude. <clears throat> All right, so here's just an, oh, uh, an overlick <coughs> on the um, the note that's being played. So when you're, you're playing on your DAW using a MIDI keyboard, for example, okay, this is your note. So I've hit E. Now it's E3 because it's the third, um, uh, the third section or the third octave.
octave of E on the piano. So boop, I hit E3, okay? It starts the note here, so we have a velocity, okay, of how hard I push that, so that's gonna give us our volume. Our note number, okay? So I hit it, boom, right? That's gonna tell, send a, so it's gonna send, uh, uh, it's gonna send a message on signal saying, okay, he's pushed the button, we need to turn that channel on, depending on what channel I've selected. It's gonna send another signal between one and 127, the number of notes. Okay, it's gonna send that note number signal saying, ah, okay, he's playing at C, great, boom. Signal gets fired, telling the computer it's a C. And it's gonna tell you how hard I'm pushing that key. Okay, now this is all for the note on, but as I hold and press that key down, okay, the note is gonna sustain, sustain, and then as I let go of the key, it's gonna send another signal. Okay, so I put when I push it on, it sends one signal telling it, okay, the note's being pushed, we need to open the gate to that channel, playing a specific note at a specific hardness, velocity, okay, at a certain volume, great. Oh, he's taking his finger off the key now. Now we're at the end, the note off. Okay, so it sends another signal saying, okay, he's taking his finger off, turns off the signal to that specific channel, to that specific note, and the velocity too, okay? Remember, release velocity is not often shown in your DAW, but it's how fast or the pressure at which you release the note um, will change the sound as well. So, musical instrument digital interface. Okay, there are sustain pedals on your keyboard. So, here we have different, uh, we do have a couple of sustain knobs. Okay, right here, a couple of different sustain knobs, okay, that control typically channel 64, okay, and these knobs can change the pitch, they can change the channel pressure, also known as aftertouch, okay, uh, which measures how hard you push down, so you can actually change the aftertouch or the channel pressure using these knobs, and it'll actually tell the computer, okay, we want to make sure that when even if he hammers on these keys, okay, it's going to give us the same um, pressure, the same velocity as which, uh, whoops, same velocity, um, no matter how hard he presses it. So we can actually set that, the aftertouch, we can actually set the channel pressure of how hard, even if I slam on these keys, it's not going to go beyond a certain point. Now, sometimes your DAW and your sampler within your DAW Okay, it's gonna ignore certain things that you may want, may have to reset in your MIDI. Okay, some sounds, some velocities. So, for example, uh, if you've set your 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 uh, your after touch or your channel pressure here, um, and sometimes what'll happen is if you've set it for many many different channels, <clears throat> the computer gets confused sometimes, and so you might just have to reset, uh, either unplug your MIDI keyboard or actually reset the program itself. Okay. So everything you create or define in your MIDI data, uh, it is stored as a score, okay, that your computer reads. So it's not stored as an audio file because you're not actually recording any sound as an uh, audio data file through your microphone or through an actual instrument plugin itself. You're creating a MIDI data file, create a digitally created sound um, that then the computer reads as a, a musical score rather than a simple or maybe not so simple, audio file. <clears throat> All right, so there are two main sound sources um, that they receive MIDI data and out they output an audio uh, statement, an audio sound. So it receives MIDI data in, and then what you hear through your monitor speakers is some kind of sound. So there's two different sources. You got a sampler, okay, as well as a synthesizer. Now the sampler, okay, allows for... Um, uh, the playback of previously recorded audio files and you can tweak and change the sound of those files and this is really great for recreating real instruments such as a violin or sound now in your DAWs themselves especially when we look at Logic Pro 10 there are many different wonderful samplers that Logic gives us already and and they're digitally created um, sounds that sound just like real instruments like a violin sound or a harpsichord sound and even in Logic Pro 10 I kid you not you can get a sampler sound of a didgeridoo 
pretty awesome. All right, so now we got synthesizer sounds as well. <clears throat> they come from big synthesizers or small synthesizers like you see in the background here. They create sound from a geometric waveform or formula. So it's not this nice curved, you know, flowing form that we get when we're talking or singing or playing an instrument. We get these synthesizer sounds that have a waveform that is very blocky, very geo metric it's not flowing like this and so it gives us that very electronic type sound so midi controllers like i said okay are roland here a really great midi controller okay there are different kinds of varieties of these types of keyboards and, and midi controllers at different price points there's some really really expensive ones and some very very cheap ones now obviously if you're buying a cheap one okay the um <clears throat> the cheaper the the purchase right the cheaper the purchase the more um uh, uh, the, the quality is not there that's what i'm trying to get at the cheaper that you buy the the quality and and the availability and the functions that you're given are not as great okay uh, media keyboards okay they are essential uh, for creating uh, digital sounds. If you don't own one and you have a DAW at home, I highly recommend you you head on to Amazon or go to Longham and Quaid or even St. John's Music and find uh, find a, a, a MIDI keyboard. Okay. Most of them nowadays are plug and play. Um, okay. The smaller ones are plug and play like the Roland. Okay. There's no software needed to download. But for the larger keyboards, especially the synthesizers, um, there's uh, uh, usually some kind of driver and software that you have to install, and they can usually be found on the manufacturer's website. Um, sometimes they'll come with a CD, um, but uh, most often than not, you just go ahead to their website and you download it right from the internet. Okay, and they're really awesome. They have USB attachments, okay, high-speed connections. In, in, uh, in the past, or even in the, sorry, in, in the past as well as in the larger MIDI keyboards, the more sophisticated ones as well as the synthesizers they will have some of them will have a usb plugin but some of them will have um a plugin that uses three different plugs uh, one will go directly to your computer the other two will be or sorry two will be plugged into your computer your computer monitors your speakers which is then routed through your computer and then the other one is plugged in to the uh, keyboard itself and we call this bi-directional functionality okay where the computer uh, the uh the MIDI keyboard sends a signal through one, it gets split into two, that goes to your monitor, so you get the sound feedback, uh, the sound, so that you can hear what you're playing, plus that sound is then split and routed into your computer, okay? Most often, um, we don't get that often anymore, but, but uh, sometimes you do find it. Um, so, MIDI keyboards, um, controllers, so this one, for example, has <clears throat> one, two, three, four octaves. Um, but the typical MIDI keyboard has the cheaper versions, the smaller ones, which is about cut in half, has two octaves. Okay, it has a pitch bend control knob. Okay, and uh, for modulate and modulation wheels. Okay, there are many different types of knobs that control different things. There are these advanced function buttons. Okay, we have um, visual controls, as well as transposition button, which is really awesome to use. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you you know how to use your MIDI keyboard, your MIDI controllers, um, and, and, and really get to recognize all of the functions that they offer, okay? Because some of them have some really cool functions that you might not know about. Okay, make sure you set up your controller, your MIDI keyboard through channel one. Okay, so when you're working your DAW and you can set the channel, make sure you set it to channel one for the best routing pathway for the sound and the synthesizer to pick up what you're actually playing. Um, there's also software instruments. Remember we talked about these things, the samplers, the software instruments that create sounds um, <clears throat> dependent on um, real instruments. So whoever created these uh, softwares, sometimes your DAW will come with preset um, software instruments and sometimes you can actually purchase um, third party or outside of your DAW program um, software instrument packages. Um, sometimes they're cheap, sometimes they're not, depending on what you want and, what, and the type of sounds you, you want and the, the quality of those sounds. But typically, software instruments are actually, they're not digitally created sounds. 
They are originally created from real life, real world instruments that then get fired into the computer. So for example, um, in uh, Logic Pro 10, we have the ability, okay, uh, using the software instruments that are pre-recorded into uh, Logic Pro 10, the bass drum. So the bass drum has roughly five different um, calculable sounds that you can get out of it, depending on on how hard you hit the um, uh, the pedal, okay? And your DAW in Logic Pro 10, <coughs> excuse me, actually gives you all five different kind of um, t t timbres of the sound of the bass drum. And so you can choose what sound you really want out of your bass drum. That's the beauty of the, the software instruments. Now, they do kind of sound electronic in some way, um, but for good quality programs um, like uh, Logic Pro 10, even in GarageBand, you get really great live quality sound out of these electronic or software instruments. Okay, so MIDI editing. So we talked about velocity. Okay, remember how hard you hit those and there's the, the start, uh, the on of the channel uh, and the off of the channel. Okay, so for example, uh, MIDI editing allows you to fine tune your recorded performance to make it just what you want to hear. So for example, if I recorded a piano, piano performance and the player played an entire chord, okay, there would actually be no way for me to adjust that chord through an audio recording, right? We just hear the chord, it comes in as one file, that's it. But on a MIDI, your MIDI data, when you create a chord using, okay, the keyboard, you're creating, sure, you're creating a chord, but on your DAW, in your DAW, you're actually seeing three separate, if you're using a three, uh, a triad chord, you're actually seeing three separate notes being played, and you can fine tune those three notes to create that chord that is directly in time. Okay, uh, quantizing. What is quantizing? Well, quantizing is when you take the data that you've created through your MIDI keyboard, Okay, you're taking that performance data that has natural variations, so that swing or groove, but when, when playing on a MIDI keyboard, okay, you might want to tighten up that performance. Okay, in a live performance, typically we play very, very close to the beat, typically. But in a MIDI performance, using a MIDI keyboard with MIDI data coming into your DAW, sometimes there's a very slight delay or sometimes there's no delay at all. And when you play, it's directly on the beat, which naturally speaking, when, when we play in real life, human beings are pretty good at getting our notes directly on the beat, but it's not exactly and precisely on the beat. And you can actually tweak that in your system itself. So if you wanted to make it feel more real and more human in terms of a real live performance, you can actually tweak it so that your MIDI keyboard chords and the, the things that you're playing on your MIDI keyboard, you can actually very slightly, you can quantize it to very small amounts and shift your sound just a little bit off the beat. So it sounds more natural, more real. So if you had a really, for example, if you had a really uh, sloppy or bad performance, okay, you can adjust the really bad notes first by hand. Okay, you can actually click and drag and adjust those notes by hand before you go into the quantizing quantization process. Now, the quantization process is way more accurate and you can do multiple groups of notes and multiple groups of MIDI data um, notes that you've played at the same time and slowly, very accurately shift things over one way or the other. Okay, um, the quantization strength so sometimes you want things to be perfectly snapped to the grid, like we've talked about. But sometimes you may want it to retain some human feel to the performance. So you might slightly quantize it off of the, the grid, off of the directness of the beat. Okay. So 100% quantization, which is snap right on the downbeat, right on each of the beats. This is a perfect performance, which does not happen in real life. Okay. Human performance, we are about 50% quantization. We are very close to the beat, 
but the way we play, the way we hear, okay, it's it's impossible for human beings to play and perform directly on the beat without the help of technology and the computer system. And so if you want your performance to be more um, more humanly, okay, closer uh, to what it would sound like in a live performance, you want to set it to about 50% quantization. But it's important that when you're quantizing in your DAW, okay, that you start slow. Quantize at 20%. Have a listen. If it still sounds really sloppy and off the beat, okay, or too far off the beat that it's not good to the ear, then quantize it even more. So another 20%. And slowly do it to 20% and repeat this process until it gets that human feel that you're usually looking for in a recording. And I can guarantee you right now that anybody that you hear on the radio or any professional um, music recording, okay, it is quantized to about 50%, okay? Um, because you if, if the sound is right directly on the beat, it doesn't sound natural. It doesn't sound like it was performed by a human being. <coughs> so, to finish off here, we have some common MIDI recording and editing functions. Okay, these are what you're gonna typically see in your DAW. Your sampler, your synthesizer, okay? Recording to your MIDI, and you're gonna also see a piano roll or graphic roll editor. So as you can see here in Logic Pro 10, we have a piano roll. And so for example, if you don't have access or you do not have um, a MIDI keyboard, okay, you can actually bring up a digital MIDI keyboard, okay, and you can actually play um, right directly from either your, your computer keyboard Okay, or right on the screen itself, you can click uh, specific notes on this digital piano. Now, if you have a MIDI keyboard and you have the piano roll open, as you play, you'll actually see the, the notes highlighted in blue as you play on your actual um, MIDI controller. Okay, so one, two, three, four. You're also gonna see, um, you can zoom with MIDI just like you can zoom with any of your regions or clips. You can edit your, you can trim, cut, split, just like any other audio um, audio data. Um, you can quantize your sounds, remember, right? Either snapping it right to the grid or making it sound a little bit more human, more real, by bringing it off the grid a little bit. Okay, and you can overdub and you can do what's called MIDI merging. So for example, you can play, let's say you're playing something, Okay, up, you can, you're playing one passage on your MIDI keyboard. You have another MIDI keyboard, or another passage on your MIDI keyboard, and you, and you want to incorporate that passage. So for example, let's say you're not really great at playing piano, and that's okay. Okay, and you can't do both the left hand and the right hand at the exact same time. That's okay. You can record with the left hand first, okay, which is usually, or sorry, the right hand first, which is usually the melody, okay, record the melody first, on one line, then what you can do is you can set it to MIDI merge or overdub. And what it'll do is it'll actually incorporate your next recording into that specific um, region or clip, right? It won't create two separate clips. It'll actually incorporate um, the sound from, an, from your merge into that original clip and it won't rewrite it, but you have to make sure that you set it up to overdub, and if you don't click overdub and you re-record it, it's gonna actually record over your clip. So if you click overdub, it'll retain that right hand melody, and then you're able to play the left hand chords around that melody in the same um, MIDI region or clip. All right, folks, that's everything for today. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to fire me an email at any time. And don't forget to answer this week's discussion question. Have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. Bye for now.